Hi guys, welcome back to junkminds.com. Let's go to the next chapter, chapter number 8 for us, expert systems and natural language processing. More of a theory based chapter for us, I'll be discussing the two aspects here. One is expert systems and the other is natural language processing. Examination you can expect uh, maybe one of them as a theory question for anything between 4 to 8 or 10 marks depending on the kind of paper that you are attempting. Anyways, let's get started with expert systems. What exactly are expert systems? See, please understand this. A lot of times when we need an advice, say in our day-to-day -day lives, we go to an expert who will then analyze your problem, maybe ask a few questions, then use his knowledge and experience and then come up with an advice for us. Exactly the same thing can be done using a system. A knowledge-based expert system basically is nothing but someone who will have a lot of information with it. The system will, will take your problem as the input analyze its own knowledge base, come to its own set of conclusions and then come up with a solution or the advice that you are looking at. It's like you're talking to an expert but instead of a person, now you have a machine. There are so many different kinds of expert systems which are available. Mycin is one of the examples where you can actually give the symptoms that you have and the, the system will then try and answer what is the possible disease that you might be suffering with. There's no specific uh, rule or there's no specific formula for designing an expert system, but based on the, the problem that you're planning to solve using that expert system and based on the amount of knowledge that you have uh, uh, that you can give to the system, the better the system would be. Now, what exactly does an expert system look like? What exactly is the architecture? Please observe this. Now suppose I'm a user and I'm trying to interact with this system. This is my system. So what exactly are the components over here? Over here, the first thing that I'll have is an interface. Over here, when, when I have an interface over here, this is for interacting with the end user. It could be in the form of question and answer, something like what Mycin does, or maybe natural language processing, which we'll discuss shortly, or maybe some kind of an interface that can interact with the user, which can accept some information or which can give back the result. But if you look at the backend, what exactly goes into this system. Now over here, you have something called as an inference engine. Now what is an inference engine? From the name itself, the inference engine will actually derive the information that is needed, the solution that is needed from the rest of the components and then finally decide what is the answer or what is the solution that needs to be generated. So eventually, it's the inference engine that will decide on the solution which is given back to the user. The system also has an explanation subsystem. Now, what exactly is this? Now, when you talk of an explanation subsystem, please understand this. Suppose if you've given a solution to the end user, the user wants to know the reasoning. How did the system go about getting that particular solution? Or why is it that that is the right solution? The explanation subsystem will give the user the details about how exactly they have incurred or they have that particular solution or why is that the best possible solution to the question that has been given by the uh, by the user the backend the strength of this particular system is your general knowledge base it will have a general knowledge base as well as case specific knowledge base see the more sophisticated the knowledge base the more updated the knowledge base the better would be the responses over here you will have all the information which is provided to the system you will have all the algorithms all the formula which will be used for deduction and so on and whatever is the information out of which what is the information which is needed for solving the problem it would be taken up and exp uh, uh, and explored by the knowledge base editor which then working in tandem with the inference engine and the explanation subsystem will generate the solution for you so that is what basically is your expert system clearly it all boils down to how how specific or how how uh, better organize your knowledge bases better the knowledge base more efficient the knowledge base better would be the response from the system I'll come back to the expert system shell again with uh, one of my other slides but at the moment let us just understand how do you go about developing the expert systems all these figures that you see over here are available to you in the study material that has been provided to you okay so how do I decide the system one of the more difficult systems to design problem identification you will first identify what exactly is the problem that you're trying to solve conceptualization for general representation you need to represent the problem in the format which is understood by the system and at the same time the system has to be designed in, in accordance to that the system should be able to understand the problem in the manner in which it is expected to 
formalization of the structures of knowledge organization a very important step where you'll actually decide how what exactly your knowledge base will look like how exactly it is going to be organized what is the information what that needs to be updated what is the information that needs to be left out and so on after that we'll actually implement this particular system carry out the various testing using the various te test cases you will check it with different questions that you would want it to answer you will verify the solutions whether they were the ones that we were expecting and then finally you will check the performance if the performance is satisfactory you are done if not go back check which is the step where you need some kind of rectification do that and the process goes on till the system is developed Though uh, the details uh, are available about this as well as this in my study material, but honestly, if you can understand these flowcharts, if you can understand these figures, you should be able to develop the answers on your own. So that is what an expert system is all about. Now, we have something called as an expert system shell. Now, what exactly is an expert system shell? Now, please understand this. See, when I'm designing this entire system, one, it's not all that easy. Two, it's time consuming. Now over here, if you see, I've left out the knowledge base part out of the, the system shell. So what I can do is I can actually design this entire system by leaving out this. Now what that does is if you have any other system which needs to be designed with a different knowledge base, with, with a, a different knowledge base editor, you can use this expert system shell, the same shell to work with the other system as well. So every time, honestly, I don't need to actually sit down and design a shell. In fact, when I'm designing my own expert system, I can just borrow a shell or I can just implement a shell which is already existing, say, in the market and then complete my system. So I don't actually need to design uh, uh, the shell for the expert system. You can have a predefined shell or you can design your own shell and then use it as a predefined shell for the other systems that you intend to design. So what exactly is an, is an expert system shell? Please understand this. Over here, coming back to this explanation, the systems were constructed as a set of declarative representations combined with the interpreter for those representations. It was possible to separate the interpreter from the domain, domain specific knowledge and thus create a system that could be used to construct the new expert system by adding new knowledge corresponding to the problem domain. The resulting interpreters are called as shells. So the basic point here is you can actually design a shell separately and use it with multiple systems. So that is what is an expert system. Now talking of expert system, it's a huge concept, but we just have an introduction to the idea of expert system uh, and the details about the design part of expert system are again way beyond the scope of our syllabus. Let's move on to the next concept that we are required to discuss natural language processing now this is something which uh, is, is pretty fascinating what we are studying over here uh, is basically applications of ai natural language processing natural language processing is something which always fascinates us and we've been trying to use it we've been trying to implement it in our day-to-day -day lives in our systems we have been uh, successful to an extent but majorly we have not been able to do it you have examples like siri you have examples like cortana wherein you can give a voice command and the system responds to it. You will find so many systems like this in, in your uh, vehicles as well, wherein you are not actually required to give in a command in the form of a button or something like that. You can just give a voice command and then it goes ahead and then it implements whatever is needed. But then how exactly do I implement natural language processing? What are the components and what are the difficulties that this particular approach might face? Now let us understand natural language processing. Natural language processing in simplest possible terms is designing a system which can understand a natural language. The way you and me talk, the system should be able to understand that. And moment I am able to do it, it will not need me to learn any kind of technical stuff for interacting with the system. So that is what is the aim of natural language processing based systems. But then how exactly do I go about doing this? What are, are the requirements so that I can implement an NLP based system? Observe this. The first thing that the machine should be able to do is carry out what is called as machine translation. It's like I'm talking to a machine the way I talk to a human being and the machine is still able to understand what I'm trying to say or what exactly is needed. Now for machine translation to happen, I need these five things. Details available in the in the study material. The first one is word segmentation. Now, if at all you have to understand what I'm saying, you need to be able to understand what are the different words that I've spoken. Unless that is done, you'll never be able to interpret the statement or whatever I've been trying to convey. So word segmentation basically talks about how to segregate the different words that have been spoken by the user. 
then you have morphology of the words see whenever i'm using word or say words i'm using a singular i'm using a plural depending on the context in which i'm using depending on the grammar in which i'm using so the system should be able to understand the morphology whether it is a singular or whether it is a plural or something like that the syntax see for you to be able to interpret what was the meaning of that particular statement we need to know the grammar of the language that is being spoken to okay i've understood the meaning of the words i've understood uh, the morphology then i also need to know the grammar i need to know the usage only then will i be able to come to some kind of a conclusion about what was just told to the system so it has to know the syntax then you have the lexical semantics one of the most difficult part in human language is that the same word might have multiple meanings i might use the same word in so many different ways like if i say right it could be direction where we say take a left or take a right or it could be just right or wrong so you have the words with different meanings so lexical semantics will help us in understanding what exactly is the meaning that has to be used in the context where the word has been used and then you have something called as uh, something something called as discourse see it's not always that that i can just look at a word extract its meaning and then go out and translate it a lot of times we have to look beyond the statement where the word has been used beyond the context in which the word has been used look at the entire uh, entire description and then come to a conclusion see all these things we as humans we these come to us naturally so we we don't find uh, uh, things too difficult but when you talk of a system system has to be trained to do all these things because without that the system will never be able to understand human language and that is the biggest challenge that the designers of natural language processing have been using we have some very good systems which use natural language processing but still we are still in the hunt for a perfect system once this is done my system needs to know the information extraction okay after it has understood the data or if it has got whatever is the data needed it finally has to come to a conclusion ki what exactly is needed that is what is information extraction so feeding the data is one part having it in the database is another part knowing the meaning of each of the words is is again something uh, something that is needed you know the grammar but finally you i you need to come to a conclusion okay this is what is needed or this is what is the answer that is what information extraction is all about then you have in interactive command and query we all know that we interact with a lot of systems which have databases in the background now for me to interact with such systems i need to learn some 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 languages like say sql or maybe something which is needed for passing on some commands or query which will then be uh, translated for the databases and then proceed process further now what we can do is we can have an nlp based system which can actually take these queries and process the information for us if we are able to do it i'll never be required to again learn a particular language which can give me certain commands or wherein i can process some queries and give it to the system i can just go to my system speak the way i'm doing now and the system will be able to convert it to the command or the query that i want and extract the system and uh, extract the results out of the system which is working in the background so if i can get machine translation with all this if i can get the idea of information extraction i can get the interactive command and query i should be in a position to design a system which understands the idea of nlp natural language processing so a small chapter with just two concepts that is what we have in this chapter thank you for learning with junk minds keep exploring keep learning see you again with some other chapter thank you